Hello everybody, and welcome to this first episode of Engines of the Rio Grande, where I cover locomotives that were owned by the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. This series is inspired by Amtrak Guy 365's Engines of Amtrak series and Buccaneer Rail Fanning's Engines of CSX series. In this first episode, I'll be talking about arguably the most iconic diesel that was owned by the Rio Grande, the SD40T-2s, aka the Tunnel Motors. The SD40-2 locomotive, an upgrade to EMD's SD40 type, was a very popular locomotive type. This locomotive was to railroads in the 1970s as to what the GVOs are to railroads now, and probably was to rail fans then what GVOs are to rail fans now. Much like these days where it'd be nearly impossible to see a train on a Class 1 railroad that doesn't have a GIVO on it, from the 1970s to around the 1990s it'd be nearly impossible to find a train on a Class 1 railroad that didn't have an SD40-2 on it. The SD40-2 also had many variants, one of them being the SD40-T-2. To answer why they came into existence, we need to go through the friendly, albeit not so friendly according to some, Southern Pacific. Throughout its existence, the Southern Pacific had to deal with the steep grades and heavy snow receiving line over Donner Pass, which would be a headache if not a thorn in their sides at times. <laughs> During the Steam Age, the biggest problem with Donner Pass was for crews to not get choked on smoke from steam locomotives while traveling through the line's many snow sheds. This problem was resolved with the creation of the cab forward locomotives, which dominated the line for decades. Now in the Diesel Age, the problem had less to do with the engineers and more to do with the engines in the locomotives overheating due to poor air circulation. To overcome this problem, the Southern Pacific and EMD began testing various ways to solve the overheating issue. Eventually, they reached a solution using the SD45-2, an upgraded version of the problematic SD45, and created a new variant called the SD45-T-2. Unlike the original SD45s and the SD45-2s, they moved the air intakes to the bottom of the car body, and shifted the radiators higher up on the hood, resulting in the large, hollow grill near the end of the locomotive so that the engine components inside of the locomotive could have more fresh air. The grill at the bottom of the rear of the SD45-T-2s will be one of the biggest ways you'd be able to distinguish the SD45-2s from the SD45-T-2s, and later the SD40-2s and the SD40-T-2s. Speaking of which... It wasn't just the Southern Pacific that was interested in these new SD45-2 variants, as the Denver and Rio Grande Western began looking at the SD45-T-2 development, much like how Akagi is looking at me right now. <laughs> Mom, Dad, could either of you come pick me up? I'm scared. The Rio Grande especially took note of what the Southern Pacific and EMD just cooked up because I don't know if you guys know this. I mean, you probably know if you've been on the Denver to Grand Junction section of the California Zephyr or ridden the Rockies to the Red Rocks or watched some of my videos where I actually rode the ex Rio Grande on Amtrak, but. Um, the Rio Grande's lines are full of tunnels. And by the time the Southern Pacific and EMD made the SD45-T-2, the Rio Grande had already had SD45 since 1967, so they definitely knew something. That, or it's because the SD45s had reliability and crankshaft issues because they were rated for 3600 horsepower. Though the SD45-2s did fix some of those issues. But anyways, the Rio Grande wanted their own SD45-T-2s but have 3000 horsepower like the SD40-2s. 
As a result, EMD did the same thing they did to the SD45-2s, only with the SD40-2, and created the SD40T-2. The Rio Grande would purchase 73 locomotives. However, the Southern Pacific would also purchase 229 SD40T-2s, as well as 10 additional locomotives for the Cotton Belt. Ironically, the railroad who would begin the line of SD40T-2s ultimately didn't become the railroad that owned the most of the locomotives. So how did the SD40T-2s work for the Rio Grande? They worked superbly. From the 1970s onwards, the SD40T-2 was incredibly successful for the Rio Grande, as it could haul anything along the Rio Grande's main lines, from coal trains from the Craig Branch, to trains of iron ore bound for the Geneva Steelworks near Orem, Utah. In addition to the regular freight trains through the Moffat Tunnel and along Tennessee Pass, these locomotives would also see use on the Rio Grande Ski Train until F40PH locomotives from Amtrak took over the power on the Ski Train. In 1988, the Rio Grande bought out the Southern Pacific and renamed themselves as the Southern Pacific. The two fleets of SD40T-2s would be combined and the combined Southern Pacific and Rio Grande fleet of SD40T-2s would reach a little over 300 locomotives and continue serving the combined Rio Grande and Southern Pacific system over the next eight years. However, the SD40T-2s didn't go their entire service lives without any wrecks. In 1989, 8278 was wrecked in the 1989 San Bernardino train disaster, the first El Cajon runway. Many would consider that disaster as the beginning of the end of the Southern Pacific Railroad. And another accident happened with another SD-40T-2, that being 5348, which was wrecked in a crash on Tennessee Pass in 1994. Despite that, the SD-40T-2s would continue on working for the Southern Pacific, and even as SD-70Ms, Dash 9s, and later on AC-4400 CWs came onto the Southern Pacific's roster and worked all over the system, they would still work alongside these newer locomotives on trains big and small. However, things would change when the Southern Pacific would buy out the Union Pacific and rename themselves to the Union Pacific. As the 2000s rolled in, the SD40T-2s would be kicked off the roster. Beginning in 2000, the Union Pacific would begin retiring and or selling off various SD40T-2s for more powerful locomotives. Eventually, by the mid-2000s, they began purchasing the Evolution Series Diesel and SD70 Aces from both GE and EMD respectively. These locomotives would begin replacing older EMDs and some older and less efficient GEs that were still on the roster by that point. The SD40T-2s, as well as their cousins, the SD45T-2s, were not spared. By the late 2000s, almost all the Union Pacific's tunnel motors were off the roster, and by the 2010s, they would be retired from Union Pacific entirely. Some tunnel motors would be scrapped, but many other tunnel motors would be sold off to other railroads, including the Kansas City Southern, which would rebuild them into Dash 3 specifications, RJ Corman, Susquehanna, the Wheeling in Lake Erie, and the Bessemer in Lake Erie. The Wheeling and Lake Erie in particular will continue on preserving the SD40T-2's Rio Grande heritage even to this day. The biggest irony is that though these tunnel motors are now on other railroads, they don't run on lines that have that many, if any, tunnels or sheds, which was the original purpose for these tunnel motors. In addition to the tunnel motors that were sold off, two Rio Grande tunnel motors have been preserved those being Rio Grande 5371 at the Utah State Railroad Museum in Ogden, Utah, that's at Ogden Union Station, and Rio Grande 5401 at the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado.
As for technical specifications, the SD40T-2s were fitted with the General Motors 16 cylinders 645E3 engine, producing 3,000 horsepower with an RPM of 904. They rode on 6-axle HTC trucks and had a height of 15 feet 7 inches, a length of 70 feet 8 inches, a width of 10 feet 3 inches, weighed 368,000 pounds, had a fuel capacity of 32,000 gallons, and a top speed of 65 miles per hour. Assuming you don't count the San Bernardino runaway anyway. They had a starting tractive effort of 92,000 pounds, with a continuous tractive effort of 82,100 pounds. During their service lives, they were equipped with a couple of horns, the Nathan M3, Leslie RSL-3L, and some Nathan P3 air horns. Here are a few samples. As for the name, the SD stands for Special Duty, 40 for the Model Series, T stood for the Cooling System Modifications, but crews and rail fans designated the TS Tunnel Motor, hence the name, and the Dash 2 indicates that this was part of EMD's line of Dash 2 locomotives. The SD40T-2s wore the large lettering paint scheme, with most of the locomotive painted in black, while the side lettering, and some stripes up front, would receive Kansas City Orange. Despite merging with the Southern Pacific, it would take several years for the SP, which at this point was just the Rio Grande in a Southern Pacific trench coat, to paint locomotives into the bloody nose livery, which also included the Rio Grande-inspired speed lettering. Said locomotives being 5350, 5351, 5352, 5368, 5378, 5380, 5387, 5388, 5393, 5394, 5397, and 5412. An interesting note is that despite the Rio Grande being owned by the Southern Pacific, the SD40T-2s were still owned by the Rio Grande, and therefore retained their reporting marks. It wouldn't be until 1997, after the UPSB merger, that they would receive UP reporting marks. Despite the SD40T-2s no longer working for Class 1 Railroad and now working for short lines or being preserved, they'll still be a part of the history of the Denver and Rio Grande Western. The Main Line Through the Rockies. Thank you for watching this video and I'd like to shout out Mike Studios for helping me edit the script. I would also like to give thanks to those who shared photos here. If this video is successful enough, then the next video I plan on doing will be on EMD's Black Sheep, the unsuccessful SD50, of which the Rio Grande also owned. Thank you for watching everybody and until next time, have a good day.